Hello seekers. Before I get started talking about today's discussion, the bucket of rocks, I just want to point out that uh, we have uh, a new website. I know I've said it in the past and, and uh, said it a few times, but Buddhist.cafe. I have over 200 subscribers here. Um, you should all go over and subscribe to that channel. We're building an online Buddhist community, uh, creating activity, and doing a lot of good things and I encourage you to come and join in and participate uh, for that as well. Now we have a, um, a bit of a beefy uh, kind of subscription system and this is um, done in order to prevent as much as possible spam and bots and just uh, kind of trolls and things like this because these days on the internet you've got all these things uh, to worry about and we're also trying to keep the website um, uh, private in the sense of safeguarding your privacy so we don't collect your phone number we don't collect your address or, or, or details however unfortunately with servers they always record the IP address because you need a signal server in order to relay information so they every, that's the thing with the internet a signal server will always record your IP address um, your whatever username you're using Whatever and the time, <clears throat> but that doesn't mean it records the information. That depends. Um, on our on our side, uh, we don't record information. We've we've uh, disabled any third party analytics uh, wherever we can, and um, usually it's once the signal server has done its job, it's peer to peer. So it's just your computer or your phone talking to the website only. Um, and on the chats, it's basically your phone or computer talking to whoever you're chatting with or messaging. And so that is encrypted to a certain extent. But anyway, on the internet, don't expect everything to be encrypted and perfect unless, uh, you know, if you want to buy Twitter for $44 million, well, then you got Twitter, right? But on our site, we're very low budget, but we're doing the best we can. And we, we do try our hardest to protect our privacy and our information um, to safeguard ourselves uh, from, from, I guess, intrusion. Um, we have a right to talk to people privately, but internet is internet. Uh, as long as there's nothing illegal going on, we shouldn't, be, uh, we shouldn't be attracting any attention from anybody, really. So today, let's talk about the bucket of rocks. Why I refer to this is because there's this thing about the past. Now, I've talked about the past a little bit, but the past, right? Sometimes when we're alone or we're concentrating or things come up in our mind field, thoughts of the past, sometimes we look around like it's like carrying a bucket, an empty bucket, and putting rocks in it. Uh, I did this, I did that, I'm a bad person, I'm a good person, I did this, I did that, I did this. And this is especially the case when uh, you're trying to do repentance, right? When you're trying to do repentance, which is not really a Buddhist thing. A Buddhist thing is more about, okay, in the past I did what I did, I can't take it back, but now, from now on, I resolve to do good and wholesome. Because what's important is what you do now. And, and, and going forward but the problem is with repentance and a lot of mixed in kind of uh, this this thing about where you have to always feel guilty about your past or feel bad about your past well there is a bit of shame a bit of healthy shame so you won't commit the same errors that's definitely uh, positive but not to the point where you start carrying around buckets of rocks with yourself where you're so weighed down in what you've done in the past uh, mentally, right, that it's affecting what you're doing today, right? So the idea is, remember that joy, joy is a factor of, uh, of enlightenment or a factor of release, right? Release or cessation of dukkha. Um, and when you're carrying, out, car carrying around buckets of rocks, right, there can be not much joy developed right there. Of course, there, there's the six other factors, but today I'll concentrate on joy, 
Now, joy is important because it lifts, it has a lifting effect. Uh, repentance is more of a Christian thing. It's more of a, uh, I guess, it's more of a, it's, it's heavy in Catholicism. And you see it a lot where people are always crying about their past, about what they've done in the past. And you see it a lot in the temples. It's not just Christian thing. I think it's just a normal thing where you've done something in the past to someone or people have done something to you. That's another bucket of rocks where you're carrying around this spiteful thing or this chip on your soul about what people have done to you. Now, if you can't forgive and forget, maybe you don't need to forgive. But, you know, forgetting is uh, definitely something you should do. There's no reason why you should engage with that person or persons if something bad has happened. It doesn't mean you have now have to be friends with that person. You can avoid them or you can tolerate them or you can move on. You, you don't really need to have a relationship with them. It's more about what's happening in your chitta, in your mind field. So if people have done bad to you or us in the past, why let them win continuously every day? That's what I say. So <clears throat> what you need is to drop the bucket of rocks. In fact, drop the bucket and travel lightly, right? So th the way we do it is when something comes up, if you're concentrating or if you're alone and there's a moment or there's an experience where it reminds you of negative things in your past, just don't follow, just stop. Just stop. Just stop there and just let it, let, let the impermanence take its course. Right? That's the one advantage of understanding impermanence is you know that the feeling or thought is not going to remain for long. Right? But to stew in it and to give it energy will only, will only create more, uh, I guess, uh, will cause more suffering, more, more stress in your mind field. And it'll block joy. It'll block happiness. It'll block compassion for yourself. It'll block goodwill. Right? It'll also block your development because you're constantly carrying this weight around. Now, the idea is not to say, well, I did it and who cares? I, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that you resolve to do better. Or you can even make up for it wherever you can. You know, you make up for it wherever you can in, in the sense of, like, if you get a chance um, to make a wrong right, do it. But you may not. You may never see the person again or the situation. The idea is, in Buddhism, is that we're trying to go to freedom. We're not trying to lock ourselves in all the time. So when we repent, we've got to be careful. When we our mind goes into the past, um, a mind that's not disciplined does that a lot. A mind that dis that's distracted does that quite a lot. Because someone who's got strong sam samadhi and strong sati uh, won't allow that to happen. It just won't happen. They can't. They can't because one is absorbed into the moment right now and just uh, moving on with the moment. Like I said many times, and I'll say it again, <clears throat> what you ate yesterday is irrelevant to your hunger today. Right? So, <clears throat> and what you thought yesterday is irrelevant right now because it might impair your uh, perception, To it might impair your perception on the situation right now and stifle your growth. See, in one thing, <clears throat> one thing that... Uh, is something that we need to wrap our heads around sometime is we have to learn to learn so in order to learn we have to be empty to absorb the lesson or the teaching or the experience and when we walk around with bucket of rocks you're not opening yourself up to learning or to growing or developing or developing because you're constantly uh, hanging on to good and bad from the past now when I say good that's also a problem too like, for example, reminiscing about uh, good things in the past and just sitting there in your imagination thinking about all these good things in the past. It's okay to do it to a certain extent, <clears throat> but it still takes your focus away from now. It still takes your sati away from what's going on now. What's going on now is that uh, we're supposed to be abiding, abide not clinging to anything in the world. We're supposed to be um, having awareness of the chitta, not clinging to the five aggregates, right? That's sati, right? <clears throat> so, and the four parameters, uh, that is body, feelings, chitta phenomena, understanding their nature, that's sati. So when we're holding on to a mental object, 
from the past, whether good or bad or neutral, that, are, that affects our ability to absorb the, the moment we're in right now. And it also has a uh, depressive effect, a, a, a going down effect, and won't let, allow you to flourish. Now, we've all done things in the past, maybe not, maybe this life some of us have done very well, but in the past, people in our past lives, who knows what we've done, all right? So, you know, only you know, only you know, right? Only you know what you've done, right? Uh, people say they know the truth. Well, I was there. I know the truth. No one else knows the truth because I was there. If someone else was there in that experience, they know the truth. Someone who's been told that experience will never know the truth. <laughs> so really, uh, you know, this gossip, this gossip doesn't take us anywhere in that sense, in the sense that you know what you've done. You know what you've done, good or bad. So the idea is every day is to step towards freedom, towards joy. And today joy is one of my, is the, is the focus point. Is today is to walk towards joy in your mind field and to go higher and to lift yourself, not to carry on buckets of rocks all the time um, and drag yourself down um, and disallow yourself, not allow yourself progression or opportunity right opportunity to grow this is very important in other words don't beat yourself down now feel shame when it's necessary to feel shame that's helpful because at least you will never do that again <clears throat> but not to the point where it becomes obsessive not to the point where it becomes obsessive because then your mind field is obsessed with that and will stray away from sati and will stray away from sama Sama, sama, sam, sama, sama, samadhi, right? Right concentration. Because right concentration is the ability to let go of everything around you and focus either on one point or analyze, analyze nature at all times, analyze anicca, dukkham, anatta, right? Not self particularly, all of them, they're, they're, all three of them are important. But to engage and to realize cessation of dukkha requires a complete letting go. A complete abandonment, a complete dispassion, right? So we need to consider this uh, at all times when we're engaging the mind, where you send the mind and what the mind buys tickets to is very important. So what you want to do is make sure you're buying tickets to joy, to compassion, to, do, to goodwill, to equanimity, to the seven factors of enlightenment <clears throat> and to uh, cultivation and development of the eight factors. <clears throat>